I, as a breast cancer survivor, will tell you how to cope with lymphedema from a survivor's point of view. Next slide, please. Knowledge is power. So the moment I was diagnosed with breast cancer, I attended a lymphedema workshop. I went all the way. My chemotherapy was going on and I had lost all my hair. But still, it was a high priority thing for me that I needed to attend a workshop to know how things are. I being in the health sector, I knew that as um, the surgery for my case was stage four, so I will lose lots of my lymph node and lymphedema is going to be a very important issue for me. Over and above that, I being a dental surgeon wanted to get back to work after treatment for as long as I can. And for that reason, uh, health of my right hand was equally important. And uh, up there, I met a lot of, in that uh, workshop, I met a lot of people of the support group who were way ahead in me in their journey to, through cancer. And I realized that uh, they know so many small little nonsense, which the doctors and physiotherapists may not let us know. Next slide, please. So the goal of any treatment for lymphedema is immediate treatment is to release swelling. But the ultimate gay goal of any lymphedema therapy should be to make uh, the patient self-manage and control the chronic condition. Because if there is uh, a massive surgery, like it was in my case, lymphedema is a lifelong threat and you have to constantly manage it. Next slide, please. Consequences. So what happens post-surgery, even if it is a, a, a initial stages of lymph, lymph uh, package, there is functional deficits, there is loss of mobility, there is difficulty in wearing normal clothing, and there are psychological issues. These things may be little or they may be more, depending on how massive your surgery is, but they are there. They're, the little bit of difference in all these things does happen post-surgery. Next slide, please. Patient education. So while a uh, patient undergoes surgery, there is very important, like uh, my esteemed speaker before me have put stress on, that it is very important that patient education should be at the top bracket and the patient should be made aware of uh, diagnosing, the self-diagnosis of things which are not to be ignored and also taught about home exercises, self-massage, skin care, precautions, and compression bandage in the initial stage itself, if you start wearing, then the lymphedema may not uh, become too huge. So all this education needed, needs to be uh, imparted to the patient to empower the patient by the surgeon. And if they are not having that much time to uh, do that kind of counseling by a counselor or by the physiotherapist, anybody, but it should be done. Next slide. Sequelae. So if you have these uh, lymphedema, which is long standing, you will have chronic swelling, excessive tissue proteins will be there, fibrotic changes will happen, chronic inflammation, infection, cellulitis is a very high, high precedence of that, and PUD orange. You know, I felt that I, being in the health sector, I knew what is PUD orange. I knew what that there was changes happening in my hand and things like that, but not many people know. So uh, the rest of the things, probably these are more uh, of a uh, diagnostic uh, signs, not symptoms. But uh, PUD skin changes can be something which you can teach to the patient that please be aware. And if it happens, do report back. Next slide, please. Signs of lymphedema. There is puffiness, heaviness, fullness in the limb, stiffness, in, and a weakness and fatigue, skin tension, tension, numbness, paresthesis. These are the colloquial and general language words which you can tell the patient ko, ki bhai, tumhe heaviness lagegi haat mein to tum isko lightly mat lena. Agar tumhare haat mein fatigue lag raha hai to tum ise highly nahi lena. You know, because I have seen ki earlier kya hota tha ki if I overwork kisi din, to thoda fatigue hota tha, I would have a rest and next day I would be normal. But now I know that the, I cannot push my boundaries where my right hand is concerned. The moment I feel he, it is having fatigue, I leave that thing totally and let uh, start exercising to move my uh, fluids. Next slide. 
so like uh, earlier i said mentioned that there can be an active intervention and then the self uh, management phase in the post surgical phase immediately post surgery that initial phase when the patient is actually hospitalized that time the physiotherapist comes and gives a visit and the breathing exercises are done and that is the time you get into the hands of a physiotherapist who starts guiding you for the future and all these things and then post surgery till maybe a month and all things like that is i think the active phase and post afterwards when the patient is not going regularly to the doctor or regularly to the hospital that is the phase when by then the patient should be empowered to self manage he should be transitioned into compression management maintaining home program and occasional follow up appointments if this is the way things go on any patient will be empowered to deal with lymphedema on their own next slide please uh um uh, our physiotherapist from rajiv gandhi had uh, talked about complete decongestive therapy i don't think i need to tell much about it but i uh, definitely feel that all these things should be introduced to the patient and uh, depending on the skill and uh, the interest of the patient uh, as to how much they can handle next slide so this was manual lymphatic drainage i i know how to do it and it's only when i am uh, too tired and or if my problem is extreme only then i go for all this therapy i right rather i would say that my treatment was done in 2016 now it is 2020 in this phase i have had one acute phase when i had to go to to the physiotherapist regularly almost for a month otherwise all uh, lymph, manual lymphatic drainage i usually do myself especially while having my bath next slide please next slide please excuse me can i have my next slide please ah, basic principles so basic principle is that the uh, passage should be clear from uh, near the heart and then towards the this uh, extremities usually what happens is ki if a person is not knowing it and they are having somebody to massage their hand they will always start from the extremity from the fingertips so this has to be told specifically they have to be very clear about tell, letting them know that the strokes have to be light they have to be rhythmic and they have first you have to clear the chamber from the heart shoulder aside and only then go down to the fingertips next slide please next slide please compression bandaging like our uh, physiotherapist was mentioning about compression bandaging uh, it has it, these are very small small uh, bandages which are wrapped uh, from finger each finger being wrapped separately and then palm and then going ahead and up they, there is a huge kit which comes medical compression bandaging kit and uh, it is a, a little a uh, difficult task to handle on your own but in spite of that we have had in a support group workshop to do self bandaging on your own so so that the patient is empowered and they can uh, do their self bandaging on their own next slide please next slide please i cannot see excuse me can you share my screen hello it is shown you can see i it's not visible on my screen doesn't matter i'll speak otherwise so therapeutic exercises the next slide was therapeutic exercises i hope that is the one which is visible on the screen uh, i can see dr jd patel cannot see my slides uh, so exercises fairly facilitate muscle pumping so this is also another important thing that one has to be told the patient has to be told that exercise are paramount and in case you are wearing a compression sleeve the exercises should be done along with your we are while wearing your compression sleeve and uh, like i said earlier the moment i feel that my hand has fatigue i immediately start with my exercise regimen so this is not something which you can ignore the patient has to be told that immediately the moment you have uh, sense uh, signs of fatigue in your hand you should start exercising Uh, next is compression garments so compression garments fantastic compression garments are available nowadays and uh, uh, they are washable uh, and they they are having ones in which the fingers are free 
uh, a garnet, they call it garnet. There's a garnet and the thumb and the fingers are a little free so that with the sleeve, you can actually do quite a lot of work. But in my case, I being a dental surgeon, wearing a compression sleeve all the time is not so easy for me. So I uh, use it intermittently as and when I have a problem, I start wearing it. And when I feel that the things are a little more controlled, I don't wear it. So again and again, I say that empowerment of the patient is a very uh, important thing because when you empower the patient, they can make their own judgment and they can do, it, do, uh, do the juggling on their own. So the next slide is, slide is new normal. So what happened after my surgery and after my treatment was that I had to get used to a new normal in the sense that I was a very hardworking person earlier, but I had to set priorities that my hand is capable of doing this much and this much uh, I should, where I should concentrate. So for me, dentistry being important, so I would uh, like to delegate things which I can to somebody else. Now the, if it's visible, medical compression bandaging is visible to me. Can you go ahead? I'm at the new, new normal slide, which is quite afterward. Next, 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 next. See, this is the one I was talking about that I set my priorities that I wanted to continue my dentistry, but still not exert too much on my hand. So I shifted into a consultant type of practice. Now I have a few consultants coming into my work so, to support me in my work and I don't exhaust my hand. So now another new normal was that physiotherapist is the closest friend. They should be very friends with them. You should have their number on your phone, phone book. And uh, uh, because the time is a very important factor, like Dr. Namik said, that it, how practical is it that every day you are going to the dent, uh, physiotherapist? So what happens is if you're, you're friends with physiotherapist, you can, you know, uh, the physiotherapist will squeeze you in, in the little portion of time which is available to you. Uh, exercise to strengthen so all the time everybody gives you importance on strengthening your arm which is affected but i for when felt that it is important to exercise the other arm also because now what has happened is that when i am cooking i would lift the heavy pressure cooker or something like that with the left hand Earlier, my right hand was far far more stronger than left hand but now they are almost at par i can do lots of high strength work with my left hand so I feel that exercises to strengthen both the arms are important. Slow down. So you know what happens is all this treatment and all that has a huge toll on your body. But your mind is still the same active and uh, strong like it was earlier. So you're, you want to do everything at the speed at which you were doing it earlier. But with this new situation, your body has to cannot uh, do it at that high speed. You lose balance, you may fall, and sometimes your mobile typing is wrong because you are trying to type very fast. So you have to learn to slow down, listen to your body signals. And obviously, like it was uh, uh, said earlier, that any fall is very, very difficult to handle, especially if you injure the affected arm. Next slide, please. Discipline and lifestyle changes. So, you know, once you have got into this cancer uh, bandwagon and you've had the surgery, so you have to have the discipline and lifestyle changes. Earlier, as a woman, I was, you know, doing so many multitasking. I was looking after home and a clinic and children and cooking. And many times, uh, my own self-care used to take back seat. But now I have to be disciplined. I have to make lifestyle changes that my hands and my health and my exercises are very important. So limb hygiene, which already you have, both the speakers before me have given uh, a high importance to limb hygiene, elevation. So uh, wherever I go, if I am at home, my bedside is having that elevation all the time. I have a very light, another pillow that if I'm sleeping on the side, I can put it, uh, pack it in between my shoulder. If I'm sleeping on the side, that pillow has to be light. If it is heavy, then it's not a comfortable sleep. So all that uh, I have arranged at home. But when I go out and if I'm touring, I'm on a holiday or something like that, the moment I reach, I start seeing, okay, rat ko sote time, maine apna haat kaise utha ke rakhe tona. Self-massage, obviously it was mentioned earlier, it is very important and I do it every day. I make it a point to do it in my shower every single day. 
compression sleeve. Like I mentioned, I wear it off and on. The day it is light on my clinical work, that day I uh, wear my sleeve in spite of not having any problem. And the day I have heavy clinical work in my clinic, I do not wear. And uh, the second criteria is if my hand is fatigued, if it is having swelling, then compression sleeve is something which I definitely wear. Now I have two of them because I want to wash one and then wear the other one. And if the uh, one is not dry, so earlier on I had one and that used to be an issue. Then, in, then I got two of them so that one can be washed and another one can be washed. Bandages. Uh, I, uh, once I had an uh, acute problem and that time I was going through a little of uh, partial bandaging which was undertaken by the physiotherapist. She used to bandage me, my hand and then my torso, part of my torso. And I used to go next day and that day she used to open it. I haven't done bandaging of my, on my own. Frankly, I think um, till, uh, till now it is I have, I have been able to manage my lymphedema without bandaging, but uh, we have had support group workshops in which bandaging has been taught, and I think I will be able to handle bandaging as and when it is required. Pneumatic compression pump. I have a portable uh, uh, pneumatic compression pump because time is a very precious commodity. Uh, running all the time for physiotherapy it becomes a difficult task. It is a portable one, like it was mentioned. I think it is just having six chambers, but uh, I use it occasionally, not usually, but occasionally. Next slide, please. Some tweaks in my life. Like I'm slowing down. I have already mentioned I've had two falls in these two, three years, and they were both were massive falls. And I have tried to... Uh, 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 try to make my brain understand that I need to slow down. My brain commands are coming too fast and my body is not able to handle them. As a sleep elevation, that is a dictum I follow all the time. Car customization, because my right hand is done. So when I'm taking a car, turning my car to the right side, it is easy. But when I try to turn my car to the left side, I find it difficult. So I have tweaked my driving style. I, have, I moved the steering with the left hand at that time. Supporting uh, my right hand is just kind of supporting and my right hand is doing handbag. I have stopped using any handbag which is uh, hanging on my ha arm. I always use a shoulder bag now, attire. I try to cover up my hands, arms, because otherwise that minuscule difference is visible to all, especially those who are astute. They will be able to notice that about an inch of difference in my hand, arms is there. Sharp knife and chopping board. See, what happens is that if you are trying to struggle to cut in the kitchen, I am a woman, we have to do these things, you know. A woman is incomplete if she's not cooking for her loved one. So uh, go for the sharpest possible knife, which will reduce the force on your arm. And then cooking, cutting on the chopping board so that you don't end up injuring your finger. Obviously, I was doing this earlier also, but what I did was I went out and bought the best possible ceramic knife so that at least chopping force is lesser. Flight frequency. So although, although your statistics are saying that flight frequency doesn't matter, but as per my experience, I found that flights are one of the most difficult things to take uh, because they kind of precipitate lymphedema. Uh, I, I am an avid traveler. I love to travel. And uh, it was once that I took a frequent flight. I went. The same day I had a presentation, I gave that presentation. And the same day I came back to Delhi. That was the time when my lymphedema arrived. Uh, like I had acute uh, stage of pain in my chest and arm. Uh, and uh, I, was, I went for physiotherapy, regular physiotherapy for around a month and things like that. So although I was use, using my compression sleeve in the flight while going and while coming also, but I felt that it was the frequent flights which precipitated it. Uh, other than that, I've had two occasions have having long flights. Once I went to Africa, so it was a long flight from here to London and then to Africa. And uh, after that, for about a day, my arm was swollen and quite uh, painful. Same happened another time when I went, traveled to USA. So I, I find uh, as a survivor's experience, I find that I can be one of the most dangerous aspects of for precipitating lymphedema and mobile typing that like I was mentioning that uh, it is always a little difficult to go on the left side at a very high speed when I am because it's my right hand is affected so when I'm typing on the left hand corner side 
typing i many times skip an l alphabet next slide please so what happens in lymphedema is that you have to have a multi pronged approach do all the good you can by all the means you can in all the ways you can in all the places you can at all the times you can and these kind of workshops and our support groups it is to spread the knowledge to all the people you can for as long you ever as you can this is a, uh, this is something john wisley has said i loved it and i'm sharing it here with you next slide please thank you i am dr c goel my email is here in case anybody wants to get in touch with me for any uh, support group activity or uh, awareness workshop i would lo love to work pro bono for such aspects uh, uh, and uh, i am thankful for the opportunity given here to empower the public thank you i think it